you guys. Medici with COD, sorry, with COD V, as uh, we will be playing tonight the Fast Host Power Tournament Call of, or the Call of Duty 4 power, uh, Fast Host Power Tournament. I always start off really badly, don't worry, it can only pick up from here. It is tonight. Intuition versus ESPC. There will be knifing it out in the background as a weekly little introduction as uh, what's happening. It is currently the £5,000 tournament. First place taking quite a bit of money. And uh, with that, we can see the knife going underway. It does hop into this matchup now. Of course, it is going to be Crash being played out. We shall have to see uh, who's going to be picking what side. Defense, of course, is the, the preferred choice on Crash. So the team that will be landing the defending side should have the advantage. Knife's over with. Now we should be able to see who's going to be picking what, what, ooh, what side. Rule rush around it. While they do that, we do see Intuition taking defense. ESPC will be uh, fake. Cinder? Cinder? I'm not too sure how to pronounce that one. Saru's replan and Apaski. And then for the Intuition side, we got Banana 2, Pawn, Exio, Taylor, Diora, and Jean. Jean sounds very elegant. Sounds like one of those names that you would find in a French restaurant somewhere on the menu. De Jean. Either way, on scope, we're going to be having replay. Let's see if we can start us off with something spectacular. Unfortunately, just missing the bounce shot and the little cross jump. And we'll be falling back to his spawn. His opponent is Diora on the R700 along with him. SMG trying to push into a banana two pawns. Going to be on the open up the opening up the frags for this tournament. Grab himself three quick frags. Fakes into Ansaru's all going down. And with that, we'll be able to move up onto the bomb site with his pistol. Napaski goes on to Taylor. Taylor being the sub for tonight for the Intuition side, as unfortunately the whole team could not participate. And now, how will he carry on defending? Of course, he is alone there with one of his teammates next to him, so technically he's not alone. Just me fumbling my English. Napaski pushing down B long. Of course, only replan with him. Can they find something? No, Diora on scope takes out Napaski as he peeks around the corner. And now Dior going up against Replan. Scope on scope. Exio actually coming in from behind, lands the frag. And that's going to be the first round to Intuition. As uh, I don't think many people would have expected that one to go. But it is the first round. It is defense, of course. They should have the advantage. But I'd like to see a little bit more of a fight put up here for ESPC. Replan going for the mid shot, lands it onto Dior. And that is his opposing scope down. And with that, hopefully. We'll be seeing ESPC start pushing over into this wall, into this A site. Unfortunately, not so. Banana Zupon and Jean both grabbing frags, and that of course diminish ESPC down to three players. And of course, with two players from Intuition over on the A side, it's going to be nearly impossible to penetrate this site. And especially when replaying is failing nades like that. I'm sorry, smokes. Nade goes out towards the back A area. Cinder grabs a frag onto Jean. Well, Taylor replies. Fake clears out the rest of A. I'm oh, sorry, one of the players in A. And now with Fake and Replay, and they have turned the tides with only Taylor left. Where is he? He's going through mid. He does get taken out by Replay in the back. And that'll be the second round now going over to the... Sorry, the, f the first round going over to the ESPC. See, guys, it's just the first... It's, it's the first one. It always goes down more difficult than the rest. Replant, though, trying to scope up on B-Long once more, does not find anything. His opposing scope, Diora, is over. Peeking left and right, doesn't seem to want to extend himself too far. He knows how good Replant is, and uh, with that, you can see he's not even trying to go up to sandbags. He's not trying to peek B-Long. Instead, just trying to play it safe. Replant, though, finally going to peek. Oh, has spotted Diora. Lands the shot. Really unlucky timing there from Diora. And uh, Replant, you know, just typical of him to be so good with that scope. Fake on the other hand, trying to push. Sorry, Cinder the other on the other hand, trying to push in towards this A site. He is on his own, although there is only one player in there for intuition. And uh, he'll be peeking backwards and forth, trying to find his little gap to squeeze into. Trying to watch towards back A. Thinks he spots something behind the fence, although he would be wrong. On the other hand, Jean just walks right in front of his aim. And that'll be the second round to ESPC. Having a look over at the scores, we see Banana 2 Pawn on five frags after just three rounds. On the other hand, ESPC seem to be spreading out the skills a little bit more evenly. 4, 3, 3, 1, and 0. So Ruse not looking so good from yet, but of course, it's only the third round in. Give him some chance to adjust. Taylor going for that lower hardware. Spam, spam, spam into uh, mid. Unfortunately, only gets killed for all his efforts. ESPC, on the other hand, have decided that A is their bomb side. Grab three frags and push in, and then, of course, replan there in there just to clear it out. And, uh,. Wow, that round, Intuition not grabbing a single frag. Not looking so good for them yet. 
See if we can catch here with Banana 2 point, see what he's going to be doing, pushing into this A site. He, uh, of course, now needs to hope that uh, ESPC have not read him too much and that his playstyle differs enough to uh, keep ESPC on their feet. But on the two point, trying to push up, does get spotted up by Napaski, gets taken out. Sender, on the other hand, keeps pushing forward. There's a player on Wooden. Uh, of course, he has no idea where that player is and is trying to suss out where it is. Not actually Wooden, it's towards back air. It was just sitting under the Wooden area. And Yora on scope, lands a shot onto Fake. Napaski is now your last man standing. He isn't towards mid. He does not have the bomb with him. And uh, with two players still alive for Intuition, my judgment tells me that it's going to be in their favor. The Pasky has spotted. Oh my word! Takes out Diora with AK spray. To be fair, it was aimed, but I did not expect Diora to still be peeking that area. Now, where is Jean? He's still sitting on that A, but has he made noise? Has Napaski heard something? I doubt he has. And now, Napaski moving out. Oh, so the worst time for both of these players. As soon as each of the one of them look, the other one peeks away. And uh, not so fortunate. Now we will be seeing Jean take under Pasquier as Napaski tries to push him towards the back A side. And uh, that'll be the end of that round. As it now finally goes in favor of ESPC on the attacking side. And it's not very common we do see the attacking side winning or staying in the lead. So we'll have to see if ESPC can hold on to this one. If they do, they've set themselves up great for the defending half. But uh, at the moment, Taylor starts us off with a car frag as Cinder tries to put f push forward with his uh, teammate. Also, Riz is actually still all the way over on Spawn Hill. He really should try and look to be on the on the front pressuring side with uh, with his co-SMG. So four left for each side. Napaski sitting in mid, waiting for the call from his teammates to clear it out. So Ruse and Napaski open up frags, going every which way. A is completely open. Taylor with a second frag of the round takes out Saruz, but Cinder's already in that A side. He doesn't know where the other two are, and I find it so weird that they're expecting an AK and a, and a scope to, you know, possibly be in that A side. So Cinder might want to try and peek around a little bit more, get moving a bit. Fake takes out Taylor. No, really, guys, it's the scope. It's the aura. He won't be inside the A area. And uh, there we go. Dior is finally giving away his position. And of course, ESPC will quickly move in on that. Fake. It's in the one with the AK taking down Diora. And that'll be 4 2. Two rounds in the lead now. As ESPC seem to be looking very strong on the attacking side. Fake leading the charge with eight frags. But on to the seventh round. Can Replan find himself a jump scope? No, he cannot. He'll be flying back towards the spawn. Now we do see Cinder finally moving up into this hardware area. There isn't actually a player above him, but there is one just below him. He has spotted Diora, takes him out, jumps into Pielli, takes out Taylor too. Now pushing forward, he has actually cleared out that hole of the B bomb site. Infexio or Exio is your last man standing. He'll be taken out by Saruz, and that'll be 5 2. ESPC starting to run away with this one. I did not expect it to be so uneven. I was uh, hoping that Intuition could put up a little bit more of a fight. Then again, one of the big players, Steven, not being able to compete in this matchup. I think it could be hindering them just a little bit, messing with their team play. But either way, it should be no excuse. Oh my word, Replan rushing over the FPS jump actually lands a superb little deagle onto one of the SMGs on Wooden. Probably not the best position for a scope. Probably not the best way to attack. But hey, it got the frag and the round was won. So I doubt there's any complaints on his team. And Exio is still struggling with only one frag on the board. Let's see what he's up to. Let's see where he is. He is an AK, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. And he's moving into lower hardware. It seems that this position has been swapped out by Taylor and himself a couple of times, depending on their spawn. So Roos takes out Exio. Not looking so good on the uh, defending side. I mean, he even had the the bar counter cover advantage, and it you know, just didn't seem that he could land his shots. Now Cinder moving out towards back A, utilizing that smoke as his teammates have laid it down for him. He will be pushing up into the A area, takes out Jean from behind. Of course, Jean never going to be expecting that one. Ooh, Cinder with a deagle. Can he land it? No, he can't. Taylor's position's been called. He lands a, a single deagle frag, but replan with a scope. Finds his head in his crosses and shuts down Taylor. 7-2 is the scoreline. Only three runs left in the half. Can Intuition bring this one back? They really do. They need to at least go for a 7-5 if they do not. Well, I can only surmount quite a bit of trouble in their direction. 
Diora taking out Saru's. Taylor's already been down as he tried to rush through mid with a shotgun. A little bit of an interesting tactic change. Either way, though, it is something that could work for them. Replan coming over into some heavy fires. Able to just peek around in this blue area as much as he pleases. And uh, really something that Intuition should try and have a look at and prevent Replan just playing around in mid as he pleases. You see Replan pushing down the Bialy. Deagle onto Exio, but unfortunately Diora finds him and uh, will be taking quite a bit of a hit for that. Oh, climbs up there trying to switch between his scope and his Deagle. Finally gets his uh, scope in hand, but Napaski on that piece. Oh, sorry, in mid does finally take a Diora. Now having a look over here at the scores once again, we do see ESPC. Still holding strong, only 5 frags difference between top and bottom. Then again, only 5 frags difference between top and bottom and Intuition, but there is uh, quite a difference in overall kills here. And now uh, we do see that ESPC are having a little bit of a feel there, able to push down any which direction they want. Intuition seems to be crumbling here on the defending side. Center decides the hell with it and kills his teammates before trying to push down B long, although it has been reduced down to a 2 on 2 make that a 2 on one Exio, you lost man standing, but then again, with only one frag to his name, it's not going to be going too well. He has got an SMG to work with, though. He needs to try and get as close as he can to the enemy to utilize that. And uh, AKR takes out Fake. Where's Napaski? Bomb's gone down. And now Exio's got a very finite time to try and move in. Has this one of the players towards top A? No, he, oh, he has, actually. But Napaski, having the better positioning, takes out Exio with relative ease. And that's going to mean that it's 9-2. Only one more round at the half. If this goes 10-2, it will pretty much assured be a rather big whitewash. And I am being told that there is no in-game sounds. I apologize for this. I shall try and fix it right now. I apologize for the inconvenience, people. I'm trying to fix this. Right, so a little update for everyone that is ho currently half time. It is 10 2 at the half. ESPC only need one more game. Sorry, two more rounds. Three more rounds to take the, the map. And uh, it is best of three. So we'll be seeing a couple more maps after this one. Seeing if the guys can bring it back while I try and uh, fix audio. I seem to have messed something up. And it seems that. Uh, Whatever in my abilities I try and do. Nope, that doesn't seem to work. Can see Reaper though having an absolute mess around as a. Oh, some people are saying there is in game sounds. Hmm. Alright, then it seems I've been duped by one of my supposed friends on XY. I massively apologize for that. And uh, we do see Fake cleaning up that round to take it to 11 2. That now does push it to, well, way too many rounds at advantage of ESPC. I doubt there's a possibility that they're still going to lose this one. Unless Intuition turn on probably about three different cheating programs and uh, hope for the best. Either way, though, Fake takes up Banana two points out of the round, and uh, Taylor replying onto Fake. 
replay and getting into a lovely little position here on the glitch area. Inxio taking out Saru's on the B alley. And now Cinder, what are you trying to do here? It looks like... Looks like we will be seeing the passkey take out John. Cinder trying to move down the hill. And passkey with another one onto Diora. There's uh, only two more left here for Intuition. Can they try and get this bomb down? The bomb plant does go down. Napaski with an interesting little position there. Oh, takes out the bomb planter. As uh, they're now trying to move forward here, of course, there's only two players left here for ESPC. The one from Exia, or sorry, the one from Intuition, just not enough. And they will be able to sneak in this defuse. But what a position there from Napaski. Holy mackerel, I've never seen a position like that before on that jump. Very nice little position, though. Definitely want to see that one more in play. Hell, I'll even use that one. Now let's uh, spot it here, wait with Napaski, see what he can do on the B-Long. Earlier is going to be waiting it out, wait f waits for his smoke to fill. Bunch of nades fly in. His teammates actually pushed all the way to the top, but it's Cinder. And uh, what a very interesting tactic from ESPC. They got four over towards the B-side, only one at A. So uh, definitely loads of trust in their teammate. Cinder waiting for the player to walk down on the corner here. Who is it? It is Taylor being caught off guard, unfortunately. And now Cinder going to wait for his next victim. Shots ringing off towards the blue area. Nothing connects, though, as uh, Cinder takes out the aura. Carries on pushing up the B alley. Takes out Jean, too. But on a two point, grabs a frag, but Saru's quickly going to clean that one up. 13 2 is your final scoreline on the first map, and it seemed a lot more hopeful at the start. And I have just been updated from my lovely man over there, Lee from Chaos TV. The, uh, the match they are currently covering, which is the Western Wolves match, is going 9 for 0. But I mean, it is expected from the group games. We can't really hate on all of them. But of course, if you guys do want to follow us more, please go check out our website at quadv.com. All the links over there on the right-hand side at the bottom of the screen. Quad V TV on YouTube, Quad V on Facebook. If you guys want to follow me, I'm at Menace on Twitter. I'm at Menace FPS, oh, sorry, forward slash Menace FPS on Facebook. Uh, and that'll be it for the first map going towards Team SPC 13-2. And we'll be right back with the second map.